Right, we're going to do the definitive MMA hate scale. I've got a little scale here, and on one end is fighters that get more love than an underdog win. And on the other end is fighters that get more hate than a power slap social media post. Let's not mess around and start things off with an easy one. Charles Oliveira. Chances are you're a big fan of Oliveira. He's got a great story, coming from the gritty slums of Brazil, health problems, all sorts of diversity, but he made it all the way to the top with one of the most exciting title runs, I think in the history of the sport, thanks to his passion and exciting fighting style. Old Charlie Olives is going right up near the top of the love end. And just for a bit of balance, let's go all the way down to the other end with Greg Hardy. Whether it's the domestic violence, that crazy asthma inhaler moment, or just the fact that he's about as likeable as a wet sock. Fans just don't seem to like Hardy one little bit. Bo Nickel, on paper, is the perfect prospect. Highly skilled, good on the mic, but after a series of questionable placements on cards, and with the UFC showing him massive favouritism, fans just seem to be turning against him. There is still time to turn it around, but as it stands, Bo is quite unliked. Alexander Volkanovsky was an incredible champion, with a now much appreciated active run. A couple of bad career decisions has got him in a bit of a weird place. But fans are still very much on the Volk train. He might not get on all of the rides at Disneyland, but at least Volk sits nice and high on this scale. You can't have a video about hate in MMA without mentioning Ian Gary, can you? I don't know if I've ever seen such an intense wave of hate for a fighter as Ian Gary received around the Luke scheduled fight, the Neil Magny fight, all the way through to the Jeff Neil fight. It just got worse and worse for the poor little fraggle. Every time him or his mummy manager boss wife open their mouths, they are just the most unlikable people that you could imagine. Anytime either of them say anything, it just seems to incite an unreasonable amount of hatred from anyone unfortunate enough to be listening. Moving on to a fighter that is the UFC's equivalent to white noise, it's Leon Edwards. As great as he is, and as good as his story is, he just seems to conjure up less emotion, good or bad, than a boiled egg. Leon finds himself sitting exactly in the middle. Hicks and Gracie is one of the legends of MMA. Sadly, he never fought in the UFC, but he is an icon of the sport and just loved by most people. His son, Kron, on the other hand, has fought in the UFC. But due to his insistence to butt scoot like it's 1994, along with his weird personality on the mic, Kron isn't very much liked by fans. Kron does, however, train with Nate Diaz, who seems unable to do any wrong in most fans' eyes. Even if it's just nostalgia for the good old days, fans just can't seem to get enough of old Nate. Right, I don't think I've met anyone that doesn't love GSP. His martial arts mentality, his epic career, or just him as a person. Probably the most unanimously liked fighter that there is. Demetrius Johnson was a fighter that didn't get enough love when he was fighting in the UFC. He had fans, but it was a bit hit and miss generally, if we're honest. But once he left the UFC and people realised what they'd lost, he's just got more and more popular ever since, making him now pretty much universally loved. Ben Askren, who DJ got swapped for on the other hand, came into the UFC giving it all the big un and rubbing everyone up the wrong way, only to have a run of fights about as impressive as Kamzat's resilience to COVID. Jorge Masvidal, who gave Askren his defining loss, hit his career high point at that moment. Probably one of the UFC's most iconic wins, shooting him into being one of their biggest stars of the time. Sadly, he disappeared up his own arsehole and turned into a bit of a caricature of himself, a rise and fall as dramatic as his hairline. Paddy Pimlet burst onto the scene with more hype than we'd seen in a while. Sadly, the gimmick didn't get him far, and while his run is continuing, fans aren't on board, and his popularity is going up and down faster than his sugar levels. On the other end of the spectrum, Justin Gagey seems to be able to do no wrong. Win or lose, his exciting style and willingness to risk it all keeps him a firm fan favourite. Bilal Mohamed can't catch a break. An impressively long run to his eventual title shot, a nice enough guy, but he just doesn't seem to resonate with the fans. The walking example of CTE, Tito Ortiz himself, is another one that just can't get it right. Mainly because every time he opens his mouth, he seems to create a new quotable funny meme moment. Sugar Sean O'Valium, however, is a fan divider. Some loving his sniper-like style, others finding his personality and lifestyle choices a bit weird. A bit of love and a bit of hate puts him somewhere around the middle. The Aljo hate, though, is strong. It was all going so well for him. 
but then that legal knee and the subsequent Oscar-nominated performance, followed by how he handled it all after, turned fans strongly against him. I think it's wearing off a bit now and fans are slowly starting to come back, but he's still quite far down on this scale. Long before his homemade videos or his Jake Paul disaster, Tyrone Woodley had a very successful UFC career, but due to his bad attitude, he never really clicked with the fans and he's always been disliked. Kumquat burst onto the scene like a cum shot, getting everyone hyped up. His career is currently in a bit of a weird spot, but I'm sure a couple of good performances will smooth it all out. Even with his inactivity and non-stop callouts, Jemayev is still pretty popular. Max blessed Holloway, we all love him. He gave us some of the most epic moments in UFC history. And there's a lot still to come now he's opened his horizons to the lightweight division. Blessed is a firm fan favourite. Brendan Sharp is terrible. An average UFC career, followed by a disastrous entertainment career, throw in a healthy dose of drinking his own Kool-Aid, and Bubba is the man everyone loves to hate. Dan Hooker, on the other hand, is a people's fighter always ready to throw down and provide fans with a banger. His career might be dangling by a thread, but the hangman is pretty much universally loved. There was a time where Connor would have been one of the most loved people here. He had the UFC in the palms of his hands. Sure, he had his fair share of haters, but now, after inactivity, steroid use, and his terrible behaviour outside of the octagon, McMuscles finds himself pretty much hated by everyone. Alex Pereira has come on the scene and rearranged it like he did to Pollyanna Viana's guts. If he carries on like this, we might be looking at a certified GOAT, if not THE GOAT, and also a massive fan favourite. John Jones, what a wonderful human being. If there was one thing that would outshine his long list of achievements in the cage, it would be his wholesome personality and honourable character. Only joking, he's a piece of shit and everyone hates him. Islam Makachev, old Maccabeeb sits somewhere in the middle some fans love him, and other fans aren't from that part of the world. He is quite funny though, and actually more exciting to watch than many would have you believe. Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, easy one. The nicest guy in the UFC, everyone loves him. Right up the top. Tony El Kukui Ferguson, the type of guy to sit on a TV and watch the couch. Yeah, the type of guy to look up and down before crossing the street. You got it. The type of guy to want Khabib in Ireland. Everyone's favourite weirdo. Look, the end isn't pretty, but how we got there was glorious. Hold on, I'm crying, brother. Ronda Rousey. Well, this book shit's starting to make her look like a bit of a moany twat, isn't it? Right down near the bottom. Then we have the old Chinaman, is he? Not sure if he's ever had the biggest following, but after the guru outed him as a dog romancer, and then Strickland tore him apart outside of the cage, and then completely schooled him inside of it, his fan base can probably fit inside of a caravan. The fact that he seems to be getting another undeserving title shot isn't going to help either. Colby Covington. I actually used to really like Colby. He talked a ridiculous amount of shit, but we all knew it was an act, and even him breaking character every now and again and laughing. But the unfair amount of title shots that he's had, and taking his trash talk a little bit too low, combined with the terrible last performance, and no grace following it, he's pretty much lost what little fans he had left. Thug Rose was a fan favourite. Ever since Pat Barry plucked her out of school, she's been a highlight of women's MMA. We'll never forget her taking down the boogie woman, or that cold ass face off, or her screaming, I'm the best, I'm the best. Her heyday looks like it might be behind her now, and fans are cooling down on her. A painfully boring title fight against Carla Esparza didn't help. Although a lot of fans still have a soft spot for old Rose. Chael Sonnen, the man, the myth, the legend. So many epic moments in Chow's career. Long before he was on YouTube, rambling on with seemingly no direction, he was making iconic MMA moments left, right and centre. If you don't love Chow P. Sonnen, there's something wrong with you. Right up near the top. And then we got TJ Dillashaw, everyone's favourite villain. Snake, cheat and general one-armed droid bandit. Whack him down where he belongs. There you go. I could go on, but I think that's a pretty good start. Let me know who I've missed and where they'd fit into all of this. And if you like this video, give us a sub. Check out this playlist of recent bangers. I'll see you next time.